The United States built walls. China found a door. And what just slipped through wasn't a whisper, it was a tidal wave. In early 2025, while Washington scrambled to plug every hole in its semiconductor blockade, a silent revolution was already complete. Alibaba had quietly unveiled a 5NM RISC-V processor, a chip so advanced it rivaled NVIDIA's best, yet lay completely beyond the reach of US sanctions. No export controls could stop it, no patents could block it, because China hadn't broken the rules, it had simply changed the game. For years, the US believed it could control the semiconductor race by locking down the most advanced chip technologies, export bans, blacklists, and ASML's EUV machine restrictions were supposed to keep China stuck in technological second place. But in early 2025, Beijing proved that the game had changed, not by breaking the rules, but by rewriting them. At the heart of this shift is RISC-V, an open-source chip architecture that has become China's ultimate workaround. Unlike proprietary designs from ARM or Intel's x86, RISC-V isn't owned by any corporation or government. Born in a Berkeley lab in 2010, it was designed to democratize chip development, letting anyone from startups to superpowers design processors without paying royalties or fearing sanctions. And China has turned this freedom into a weapon. While Washington was busy tightening export controls on cutting-edge lithography machines, Chinese engineers were quietly sidestepping the battlefield entirely. In late 2024, Alibaba's T-head unit dropped a bombshell a 5mm RISC-V processor built specifically for AI workloads. This wasn't just a lab experiment, it was a direct challenge to NVIDIA's dominance in AI accelerators. What made this chip so dangerous to US tech supremacy, it wasn't just advanced, it was untouchable. Because RISC-V is open source, no sanctions could block its development, no patents were violated, no export controls breached, China had simply outmaneuvered the entire U.S. playbook. The ripple effects were immediate. By early 2025, Chinese chip production had surged 63% year-over-year, according to Bloomberg. Companies like JHIC and Yangtze Memory pivoted to RISC-V, redesigning their architectures to thrive without Western dependencies. Meanwhile, NVIDIA and Intel were left scrambling, their licensing models suddenly looking like relics of a bygone era. But China wasn't content with just domestic success. RISC-V's real power lies in its viral adoption. Unlike ARM, which requires costly licenses, RISC-V is free and Beijing is aggressively exporting it. In 2024 alone, China signed 65 semiconductor deals with countries like Brazil, Russia, and Indonesia, offering not just chips, but blueprints, training, and low-cost IP. Huawei took it further, rebuilding its Harmony OS around RISC-V ensuring 300 million devices would run on a US-proof ecosystem. Even European giants like Siemens and Bosch began adopting RISC-V as sanction insurance. The message was clear. China wasn't just escaping US control, it was building a parallel tech universe. The most startling twist? RISC-V's momentum is now self-sustaining. By mid-2025, nearly 19% of global processors shipped were RISC-V based, with projections hitting 26% by 2026. The RISC-V International Consortium, now headquartered in Switzerland, operates beyond U.S. regulatory reach. Chinese engineers lead 52% of its technical proposals, effectively setting the standards for tomorrow's chips. This isn't just about semiconductors. It's about who controls the foundation of the digital age. While the U.S. was busy guarding the gates to old technology, China quietly built new ones and threw them wide open. The revolution isn't coming. It's already here. And Washington is just beginning to realize how far behind it's fallen. The U.S. thought it had China cornered. By 2023, sweeping sanctions had cut off Beijing's access to the most advanced chip-making tools, SML's EUV lithography machines, AI accelerators, and critical semiconductor IP. The goal was simple, stall China's tech rise by choking its supply chain. But instead of collapsing, China's semiconductor industry did the unthinkable. Faced with export bans, Beijing didn't plead for leniency, it doubled down. Between 2022 and 2025, 
China funneled over $140 billion into domestic chip firms, slashing reliance on foreign tech imports by 17%. This wasn't just spending, it was a war chest for technological independence. And the results were staggering. Companies like SMIC, once written off as lagging behind, pulled off a 7NM chip breakthrough without EUV machines. Tech Insights confirmed the feat in late 2024, proving that China could innovate even with restricted tools. Similarly, Yangtze Memory Technologies redesigned its NAND flash architectures to work on older, unrestricted production nodes, sidestepping sanctions entirely. The lesson? Sanctions didn't stop China. They forced it to adapt faster. Before the sanctions, China relied heavily on Western tech. But the U.S. crackdown triggered a fundamental mindset shift. Self-sufficiency became a national imperative. As Chris Miller, author of Chip War, noted, when you sanction in a complex supply chain world, you don't stop development, you just reroute it. And reroute it did. Chinese firms pivoted at breakneck speed, retooling equipment, retraining engineers, and embracing open source architectures like RISC-V to bypass US restrictions. The government fast-tracked subsidies, streamlined approvals, and even poached top global talent to fill gaps. By 2025, the outcome was undeniable. Chinese chip production was growing faster than ever, while US sanctions looked increasingly like a blunt instrument in a game that had already changed. The most unexpected twist? The sanctions reshaped the entire semiconductor landscape, just not how Washington intended. Chinese semiconductor companies reported a 30% spike in overseas licensing revenue, as nations like Russia, Brazil, and Indonesia turned to Beijing for tech partnerships. Air US partners like Germany and South Korea quietly boosted R&D funding for risky V, wary of future supply chain shocks. Instead of isolating China, sanctions pushed it to forge new alliances, making the global tech ecosystem less US-centric. In the end, the US strategy had an unintended consequence. It made China stronger. By trying to freeze China's progress, Washington forced innovation. By cutting off traditional supply chains, it spurred self-reliance. And by betting on control, it underestimated China's ability to rewrite the rules. Now, as Risk V spreads globally and Chinese firms master next-gen tech like neuromorphic and quantum chips, one thing is clear. The era of U.S. semiconductor supremacy is no longer guaranteed. And the biggest irony? America's sanctions may have handed China the blueprint for its own dominance. Huawei's near-death experience after U.S. sanctions in 2019 became the catalyst for China's most brilliant counterstroke. By 2025, Harmony OS, completely rebuilt around RISC-V architecture, was running on over 300 million devices, from smartphones to smart factories. The genius? It wasn't just another Android fork. Harmony OS bypassed every U.S. software patent, creating an app ecosystem that didn't rely on Google mobile services. This wasn't merely survival, it was strategic emancipation. Chinese consumers kept their advanced tech, while Huawei's near perception became the foundation for something Washington couldn't touch. China didn't stop at its own borders. Recognizing that true tech independence required global allies, Beijing embarked on a diplomatic tech blitz in 2024. 65 cross-border semiconductor deals signed with Brazil, Russia, South Africa, and Indonesia. Not just selling chips, but exporting the entire framework design blueprints, fabrication training, and low-cost IP. European industrial giants like Siemens and Bosch adopting RISC-V as sanction insurance, the strategy was brilliant in its simplicity. Make the world dependent on China's open-source standards rather than American proprietary tech. As Handelsblatt reported, this wasn't about copying Western systems, it was about creating sovereign alternatives that made U.S. sanctions irrelevant. By mid-2025, RISC-V accounted for 19% of global processor shipments, projected to hit 26% by 2026. This standard's dominance created a self-reinforcing cycle. The more countries adopted China-backed designs, the harder it became for US tech to remain the global default. The implications were staggering. Chinese semiconductor firms saw overseas licensing revenues jump 30% despite US sanctions, Companies like 
SMIC proved they could produce seven NM chips without EUV machines. Even U.S. allies began quietly developing RISC-V alternatives, seeing the writing on the wall. While the U.S. remained focused on controlling traditional semiconductor technology, China was quietly making breakthroughs in entirely new fields of computing. By 2025, advances in brain-like neuromorphic chips, quantum security, and next-generation processor designs showed that China wasn't just copying Western tech, it was inventing the future. One of the most significant breakthroughs came from Alibaba's Damo Academy, which developed the world's first commercially viable neuromorphic chip based on RISC-V architecture. Unlike standard computer chips, this new processor worked more like the human brain, using far less power while handling complex artificial intelligence tasks. This innovation meant China could power everything from smartphones to entire smart cities more efficiently, all while completely bypassing U.S. technology restrictions. At the same time, researchers at Singa University were working on an even more ambitious project, a quantum secure processor designed to protect against future cyber threats. This technology put China years ahead in developing unhackable systems, giving it a major advantage in securing government, military, and financial networks. Behind these advances was serious financial firepower. China's AI chip industry grew by 38% in 2024 alone, reaching nearly $19 billion in value. Both government funding and private investment poured into cutting-edge fields like quantum computing and brain-inspired processors at unprecedented rates. Their battle for tech supremacy was never just about chips, it was about who gets to write the rules of the digital age. By 2025, China had moved beyond simply surviving U.S. sanctions to actively reshaping the global tech landscape in its image. The consequences reached far beyond semiconductor factories, threatening to permanently alter the balance of power in the 21st century. The most startling development was how China turned openness into influence. RISC-V, originally created to democratize chip design, became Beijing's most powerful diplomatic tool. Over 40 countries had joined China's RISC-V alliance by early 2025, including major economies like Brazil, Russia, and South Africa. These weren't just trade deals, they were comprehensive partnerships where China provided chip blueprints, manufacturing know-how, and technical training. The goal was clear, create a critical mass of nations invested in Chinese tech standards. This strategy proved devastatingly effective, as the Wall Street Journal reported, Chinese semiconductor firms saw overseas licensing revenues jump 30% despite U.S. sanctions, with most growth coming from countries deliberately bypassing American supply chains. Even traditional U.S. allies like Germany and South Korea quietly increased funding for RISC-V research, hedging against future geopolitical shifts. The tech world was reorganizing itself around China's open-source ecosystem, not because of coercion, but because it offered freedom from Western patents and sanctions. The standards battle told the same story. With the RISC-V International Consortium now based in Switzerland, U.S. regulators lost their ability to influence its development. Chinese engineers dominated the technical committees, accounting for 52% of new proposals, according to Linux Foundation data. Every approved standard subtly favored Chinese interests, from AI accelerator designs to quantum security protocols. By mid-2025, RISC-V processors already accounted for 19% of global shipments, a number projected to hit 26% by 2026. The architecture was becoming too big to contain. Financial analysts at Gartner saw the writing on the wall. Their projection that RISC-V would power 25% of global CPUs by 2027 wasn't just a market forecast, it was a map of technological sovereignty being redrawn. Countries adopting Chinese standards gained independence from U.S. export controls, but at the cost of entering Beijing's orbit. Huawei's Harmony OS running on 300 million devices demonstrated how entire software ecosystems could flourish outside Western control. Now, this isn't just about chips, it's about who controls the future. Will America wake up in time, or is the next tech empire already being built? Smash like if you think the U.S. needs a new strategy, subscribe because this war is just getting started. Comment below, can China really be stopped now, or is it too late? Tap the bell before YouTube's algorithm realizes how explosive this story really is.